Welcome back. I recently had the opportunity to speak with an incredible author, Victoria Aviard, all about her sequel to Realm Breaker. It's called Blade Breaker. Victoria is a best-selling author, and I know audiences, readers nationwide are so excited about this new installment. Here's more. Blade Breaker is the highly anticipated sequel to the instant number one New York Times best-selling Realm Breaker. It features a breathless action, deadly twists, and gripping magic, making it perfect for fans of many other books in the same genre, but Blade Breaker is like no other. And today I have the opportunity to speak with best-selling author Victoria Avigard. Thank you so much, Victoria, for being here. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm super excited to be touring in person for this book. And um, thank you so much for having me on. Well, I always love talking about books and yours have been so incredibly successful. You're an incredible author. So tell me more about Blade Breaker though. Yeah, so the whole, this is the second the Realm Breaker series. And for those people who haven't read it, which is probably a lot, <laughs> Realm Breaker is, I like to call it a mix between Lord of the Rings and Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, the main question of the story is what happens when the heroes fail? What happens when the classic fantasy heroes go out to save the world and they all die? Um, but the world still needs saving. So these books are about the JV team who kind of get tapped to help save the world. And it's very much not the heroes you would expect. Some of them are kind of bad guys, but they're all united in this goal to not die. <laughs> and I had a lot of fun playing around with that. I was very much a kid who grew up loving Lord of the Rings, but not really seeing room for myself in the fellowship. And I found myself in the position where I was a writer. I was thinking of what I wanted to write next. So I decided to write something that I would have really wanted to read when I was a teenager. And that's what Realm Breaker is. Does Blade Breaker, does it stand alone or do you really need to read Realm Breaker beforehand to get the most out of it? Yeah, so Blade Breaker is a direct sequel, right? Where Realm Breaker ends, Blade Breaker picks up. I think people would be a little confused if they hadn't read the first one um, and would sort of miss out on getting to know the world and the characters and the stakes of the story. And the main character, I love how, well, one of the main characters, I love how, you know, it's described as being an individual that fights for hope amid blood and chaos. I think that's something we really need right now. Yeah, um, it's really, really, I have a cast of characters who kind of are on the spectrum of morality, even though they're all working towards the heroic goal. And I definitely have a couple who are more on the villain end and some who are pure heroes. And those are really rewarding to write because sometimes heroes aren't very interesting but you still want to have them on the page. You still want to have that pure person who you know is always going to do the right thing, who is capital G good, because we don't get to see that any a lot in our own world. And I feel like a lot of us are communicating with that frustration in ourselves. I'm very much someone who escapes into um, fantasy stories when things get a little too overwhelming for me. And this series, writing it, has been really cathartic for me to create a world where good and evil exist. There's a spectrum between them. And I won't say things are going to work out, but there is hope at the very least. And I know it's really easy to feel hopeless these days. You're able to create this incredible world. What is your writing process like? Do you have to be in a certain place? Do you know specific things have to happen in order for you to get in the right mindset mm -hmm. to be able to create this? Yeah, the moon has to be in the right space. Um, <laughs> so I'm really lucky in that my full-time job is to write. I am able to support myself entirely by my writing career, and that's really rare for most authors. Um, so I, it is my full-time job. I have to treat it like a job. I work Monday to Friday, not nine to five, but 10 to five. And uh, I have to get into my routine. Writing is very much a muscle. And when I get out of rhythm, it takes a little bit of time for me to get the engine going again. But uh, I take my weekends off. It means Sunday, I'm really excited for the work week to start. Uh, and I don't burn out as easily because I make myself take those breaks. I think a lot of authors burn out or hit writer's block because they drain the well a little too fast and don't let it refill. And I am on my my work schedule that I know really, really 
helps me. At this point in time, I'm writing my eighth book right now. I've sort of figured out what I need and I need Monday to Friday, nobody to talk to me. <laughs> you mentioned that you're writing these books for for actually your younger self because these are books you mm-hmm. wish you would have been able to read when you were a teenager, when you, you know, were a young adult. So do you have any advice for young writers if they have a story that they want to create? Something that was really helpful to me as a teenager, and I grew up in a small town, public school system, didn't really have access to a lot of traditional creative writing classes. Um, That wasn't part of the curriculum. But I found fan fiction very early on in middle school and high school and a little bit of college. And that was my first foray into writing for my peers and writing for feedback. Um, and while you are, you know, playing in someone else's sandbox, it's really valuable to learn who you are as a writer, what you gravitate towards, what you're good at, and more importantly than that, what you're bad at so that you know where your weaknesses are so you can construct your storytelling and your writing in ways that help with your weaknesses. Um, so for me, fan fiction was great because it was anonymous and I was so concerned and so embarrassed with anybody reading my work, but once you took away face in the name, it was a little bit easier to put myself out there. Um, And that was one of my big battles was being okay with other people reading my work. And now it's very much about other people reading my work. And where can we find more information about you, about this particular new release, Blade Breaker, and also about all of your other books and everything you're working on? Yeah, so I'm really active on TikTok, even though I am over 30. Uh, and I have Instagram, my website, victoriaaviar.com has information on all of my books. This is information on my tour I'm on this week. So if you are in one of those cities, buy a ticket, come on out. Let's talk about books. And for the most part, I'm very active on social media. Well, congratulations, Victoria Aviar, for joining us today. And for this big release, Blade Breaker is the highly anticipated sequel to Realm Breaker. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time, especially during this busy tour. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be doing this again.